Hi guys, this is Katie Bunshoten, the president and founder of Certum Solutions here in North Carolina, located outside of Charlotte in Monroe. If you hear her hear any random noises, apparently Rocky, my office dog, is having his afternoon slumber nap, and he is deciding that we are interrupting said slumber, so I apologize in advance. If you like the kind of content we have on the Certum Solutions channel, please do me a favor and subscribe. If you like this particular type of video, so QuickBooks functional videos or this workflow type that we are working through, please make sure that you like this video. That's your way of voting. Um, also, you can leave us a comment. I'm trying to stop saying um and it's driving me nuts, but I apologize for the ums. Leave us a comment, say hi, let me know what you'd like to see more of, and we will do our very best to create that kind of content. So for today, I think we have a bank reconciliation video already, but I'm going to do one as a refresher just in case anything has changed. If you were here with us earlier today, we actually just did another one on manual bank feeds and QuickBooks Online and how you do those and when they would be helpful. Uh, spoiler alert, they're really helpful when you're setting up QuickBooks for the first time. If for some reason your bank connection may have left some transactions out and you want a quick way of bringing them in, or if maybe your bank institution itself does not support online bank feeds at all. For this video, I thought because we just brought in all those lovely bank feeds, it would be a really great opportunity to do a bank reconciliation. Before we do that bank reconciliation, I wanna go ahead and go over to our transactions and take a look at the transactions that just came in. Okay, so when you have transactions that come into QuickBooks, they go to this little twilight zone area that I like to call our um, twilight zone area. It's where your bank feeds come in, but they're still what you call non-posting. They may be here, they are not anywhere else in your books. Okay, so if you accidentally bring feeds into the wrong place, if you're doing them manually, you can still fix it right now. You can't fix it as easily if you post them. So when I click this first one, you'll see accept, edit, or exclude. If I go crud, I just brought 16 transactions into the wrong bank account. This is your opportunity to exclude them and they will never touch your books, okay? That's the first thing. Um, if they are valid transactions, so yeah, these are all valid, I need to bring them in, um, you can go through and accept them in bulk or you can go through onesie twosies and you can change your relevant information. So say Bank of America. So I'm just putting something in there. Hit save. Okay. Was this for a customer? No, it's just a random bank feed. Do I have a GNA class in here? Those of you that use us for your books will notice I use GNA classes. Uh, we don't have one set up in this test right now. But here's our test memo that we brought in from Excel. I could put um, bank charge for a wire or whatever else we have to do. Okay? And I'm just going to hit add. And I didn't pick a class, which we know I didn't pick a class because you don't have GNA in there for me right now. So I'm going to add a new class. So I'm just going to GNA. That's fine. No, we'll put spaces in later. All right. And then, so then this one can be added. Check the transaction date. I don't know what our transaction password is. Dag nabbit. Okay. So let me show you how you override your transaction date if you are an admin. So I'm going to go up here to my company. I go to advanced, I go to close the books, and I'm going to change this password. Actually, I'm going to remove this password and hit allow changes after viewing a warning. Okay. But if you are not, if, how do I say this? Um, this is not something you wanna use in a live file, just willy nilly take your passwords off, obviously. Um, and you have to have pretty good, strong permissions, admin permissions to do so. Hit yes. So I changed that to warning, so it all came through. Um, I can do that because this is a test file, but if it was a live file, most definitely you would be locked out. You wouldn't be able to change a password. So I'm gonna go ahead and for the purposes of today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and accept them all. Hit yes. There we go. These are saying we have to select the class. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit GNA. The other options you have are, let's see. 
If you already had it in the bank, you can also, or in your books, you can also hit match and you can also record it as a transfer. So if this was like transferring money from one checking account to another, that's when you would pick transfer. So we're almost done. And I'm laughing at myself because I've already thought of something else I'm gonna have to fix. Category or match, we have it under contractors, check. Um, we'll just say Jim works on the day program. Yes. And we're down to one. Let's see. GNA. There you go. Add. Perfect. So we've got everything brought in, and it says our balance in QuickBooks is 544923. So what I'm going to do is go into my reconciliation screen. Now, in theory, you wouldn't just go into your reconciliation screen and not have a bank statement with you. Typically, when you're doing a bank reconciliation, you're going off your bank reconciliation statement and you're gonna use your beginning and ending values. So your beginning value will self-populate. Um, your ending value you put in. So let's see, but for today, I'm gonna to edit my info. Four, nine, two, three. Save. Okay, so this is what your bank reconciliation screen looks like, okay? So what you'll do is you'll have your bank statement next to you. If you have active bank feeds where you see these two little windows, you're gonna see all those have little boxes underneath them so it shows that it's already come in and cleared. If it doesn't have that and you're using your PDF statement, you can use that as well. And ideally, I use that in addition to, right? Because I wanna make sure that I'm going off of my statement that nothing has come in twice or whatever, and that I don't miss a manual transaction um, that may be inaccurate. There's all kinds of things that you find when you're doing bank reconciliations. The important thing about bank reconciliations, one, they are very zenful. Uh, if you talk to just about anybody at Certum, we're all gonna say our bank reconciliations are our favorite thing to do. It's very peaceful. You can go through and you kind of work your way through. I love bank reconciliations. That being said, don't let this keep you from double checking your reports. You can't tell somebody, I thought everything was fine because I was doing my bank recs and it always cleared out. All you're doing here is reconciling the cash piece, right? When we're done, you have to look at your reports and make sure that the reports themselves look accurate because it's very possible that this visa transaction thing is going to the wrong account altogether and you're not actually seeing it right now. Let's see. And there's not an option for them to show you where it's going to. So like this one, how do I see it? You've got your split. It's not showing you the split, is it? And what a split is in QuickBooks, I know I'm probably losing some of us right now. It means it's going to multiple multiple accounts. So you can't see your split here. That makes it even more important that you check your financials. Somewhere where it's not a split, it's a singular account. So this one's going to cleaning and janitorial. Yes, you can see where it went. You can say, yes, that makes sense. But if it's a split, it's not going to show that to you. So what I would do is I'd have my bank statement next to me and I'm going to check off things as they come to the bank statement. And if you're on the right track, that difference is gonna get smaller. It may occasionally get bigger, but it's hopefully just gonna get smaller. And you keep going until something magical happens. And you have a $0 difference and a green check mark. I love green check marks. They make me think about when I was in school, I had straight A's. So hopefully sometimes had straight A's. I had a good grade on my, on my stuff and you get a nice cool check mark right there in your assignment. That's what we wanna see, we wanna see a green check mark. Now what it's gonna do is it's going to say finish now. But before we jump into that, I wanna show you highlight what we're doing here. The beginning balance here that you didn't see and I didn't highlight 100% of the way is from your bank statement and should match the beginning balance on your bank statement. Your statement ending balance is just that is from your bank statement, it's your statement ending balance. If you look here and for some reason the ending balance is wrong, you hit edit info, okay? And you can also change the date. Say I put the wrong date, you can go back and fix that. 
If for some reason you think some transactions came in after the closing date statement, but it should have been on here, you can X this out so that you show all the transactions, okay? Um, which in this case, there aren't really any because we're not going forward that far. And then you can go ahead and say, I only want to see through the end of the statement, which makes it a little bit cleaner so that you can move forward. That being said, if you do have transactions that were cleared on the bank statement, but for some reason were dated after it, that's a little bit of an orange flag. You want to go track it down and make sure you grab the right transaction. And if you did, you need to fix your timing date. So you need to make sure the date is accurate, right? So we're going to go ahead and hit finish now. And it says you reconciled this account. And it says, do you want to look at your reconciliation report? By golly, yes, we want to look at that reconciliation report. And let me tell you why. A lot of people skip past it, especially if you're in a hurry and you're working through multiple months and you're trying to get stuff done. It is easy to say, I don't need that bank rate. I just know it ties in. That's what I need to know. Your reconciliation report gives you a lot of great information. It's very important for your business. Deposits and credits cleared and your, your um, transactions that were cleared are fantastic. However, what you will also see on this report is if there's any problems, you're going to see them at the bottom. It'll say transactions not cleared as of the statement date. That's what you got to look for. If you have transactions that are like a few days old as of the ending statement date, you're fine. That's probably a check that hasn't cleared out yet, whatever. If you have ones that are like months old or dare I say it, years old, it's like, oh gosh, okay, you need to handle those because that's not normal. My rule of thumb, typically, if something is more than two months old, I'm going to handle it, okay? Theoretically, unless it's a paper check, if it's less than a month old or if it's more than a month old, I'm going to take a look at it because I don't know what happened there. If you have things like you're, tr you're taking customer payments in QuickBooks and for some reason payments is down or whatever happens and it doesn't get charged, it's really easy to miss those. They give you an alert most of the time, but sometimes they forget that. Yes, you get an email sometimes, but sometimes it forgets that. You know where you don't miss it is on your bank reconciliation because it never cleared your bank. And then you can go, whoa, I had this customer payment that doesn't seem to have hit my bank account. What happened, right? And you can go in your merchant services portal and you can take a look at ones that were declined and you can fix it from there too. It gives you tons of information. So don't throw away your reconciliation report. You look at these and you read them because that's an important diagnostic tool. Next, you guys thought that I was just going to show you how to check off little circles as it were. No, because I am very detailed at everything. Profit and loss. So we looked through your bank statement. We got everything done for that. The next thing, this is ridiculously simple. Yours would never be this simple, most likely, unless you're just starting out. But you want to look at your profit and loss. And you don't want to look at the profit and loss as a whole in this case. You want to look at where things were classed to. So doing your bank statement or bank reconciliation is a great opportunity to pull your P&L, uh, which is what we call profit and loss. Click on the net income button and that brings you into the profit and loss detail. Okay. Somebody told me I talked fast recently in one of the comments. So I'm really... I'm going to slow down. I'm going to try to, but just as a tip, if you want your free YouTube videos and you want to be able to listen to them slower, there's a handy dandy little button that does that for you. Speaking slowly does not come very easily to me, but I'm going to try. So, sales of product, never mind, sales of product income. You want to take a look at all of the transactions in each bucket and make sure that it makes sense. Got it? If one of these stick out to you, oh, that's from our depreciation video. They're still popping up. That's awesome. Um, stick up to stick out to you, and they seem wrong. This is an opportunity to click on it and say, okay, what do I have to fix? Okay, and you can take a look here and say, okay, well, this was wrong because of this, or maybe it was right. Okay, you can also look here at your audit history to say who messed up my transaction. I need to go tell them not to do that again. Okay. So in this case, let's see who we did. Okay, added by Nicole Martin. She added this on April 26th. Me and her like to talk about chickens a lot, in case you needed to see behind the curtain here at Sertum. At least two of us have chickens and we talk about them. Balance sheet. You also do the exact same thing for your balance sheet. For the balance sheet, I more will take a look at my perpetual balances and make sure they make sense. Negative 42 grand in an account does not make sense. That doesn't make sense. Unless it was a Contra account. That's not a Contra account. That's a cash account. Same thing for checking right here. Um, 
this is kind of our sandbox, so it doesn't surprise me because we put all kinds of craziness in here. But um, but yeah, so you just want to look down here, make sure your balances look normal, okay? Maybe run some ledger reports to see what's been posted to it. Make sure everything looks accurate. Um, and so on, here you go. So all that being said, make sure your balance sheet balances. This is my 9260404. And then you scroll up here, and yes, it does. Well, our balance sheet is indeed balancing today. It's doing its job. So that's fantastic. Um, that, I think, would probably wrap up most of my bank reconciliation video as well. And if you have any questions, let me know. So from my understanding, we have gone through bank feeds. We've gone through uploading manual bank feeds. And we've gone through bank recs. And we kind of sort of went through reviewing your P&L and balance sheet. All within not a lot amount of time. So today was extremely productive. I'm going to go reward myself with a milkshake or something. Anyway, I hope everyone has a great day. And I look forward to our next video together. And please let me know if you have any questions at all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.